Listen to that. No builders banging, no seagulls kicking off. It's quiet for once. Right, today we are throwing back to the eye. Um, when we looked at the eye, did a bunch of videos on the eye, there's a lot of anatomy in the eye. We talked about accommodation, but we didn't talk about virgins. I think I hinted at it. We'll do that now, nice and briefly. So to start with, we'll talk about accommodation again. We'll just go over that and the anatomy involved. And then we'll talk about virgence, what it is and convergence. And then the, uh, the functional anatomy involved. The reason I was reminded about this is that when I start looking at things close up, it's getting slower and slower for my eyes to focus on the thing that's close up, like my smartphone. It's getting really annoying, mostly because it says I'm getting older. Like today, when I was trying to change the batteries in this microphone, it's got a little tiny battery in there. I wanted to see which one it was. So, Accommodation is um, when you go from focusing on something in the distance, so focusing to infinity, to focusing on something close up. If you're watching a computer now, or you've got your smartphone or your tablet or whatever, you're quite close to it, right? Your eyes have accommodated to let you do that. Now, if I take the eye apart, we talked about all the bits of the eye. Now, inside here, and I'm going to pinch some of the labelling from the previous video that I used so I could do it again. Don't have to do all the thingying again, right? That's why I'm wearing a shirt. See, in that video I'm wearing a shirt, and this one I'm wearing a t-shirt, and you probably never would have noticed. Two more weeks of the summer, and I have to start dressing like an academic again, because students are back. Anyway, what happens is we have the lens. You know the purpose of a lens. The purpose of a lens is to um, focus light onto something else. In the eye, we have the retina, so that's the photosensitive bit, um, and light is focused on the retina, and then that information goes to the brain and we make sense of it, and we perceive the world around us visually. Now the lens is surrounded in a ring, you see the ring going around here, so the lens is kind of a round thing, and it has another round thing going around it, and this is the ciliary body, and the ciliary body is a muscular thing surrounding the lens and the lens then is is suspended from the ciliary body by these suspensory ligaments what that means is that if the ciliary body becomes a bigger ring then the lens gets stretched if the lens gets stretched it gets thinner and that's for focusing on distant objects the lens is thin and if the ciliary body contracts and gets smaller then the lens is no longer pulled by those suspensory ligaments, so the lens also shrinks and it becomes fatter. And it's that state that the fatter lens that focuses light from a near object onto our retina. And that's accommodation, the changing in shape of the lens to focus light onto the retina. So we do that quite easily. And there's a reflex there. So the optic nerve, cranial nerve two, is carrying sensory information from the retina back to the brain. So that's the afferent limb of this reflex. The brain then does a whole bunch of magic and uh, <laughs> recognizes when it needs to focus on something close up and then sends motor nerve impulses uh, to the ciliary body, causing it to uh, contract and get smaller, causing the lens to shrink and fatten to focus the light on the retina when we're looking at a nearby object. That efferent limb is carried by cranial nerve three, the oculomotor nerve, and those nerve fibers are actually parasympathetic. So that's accommodation. Now, what about vergence and convergence? There is something else we need to do if we're going to focus on a, a nearer object. Now, the retina is not equal all over the retina. You know this. You move your eyes to look at something, and the reason you look at something is because there's a region of the retina that is higher definition, there's a high def bit, 
than the other parts of the retina. So the, when you look at something, the light from that something that you're looking at is focused on the macula. So the macula has a higher density of uh, sensory cells, so a higher, higher resolution of vision. And within that you have the fovea, which has an even higher uh, resolution, right? So that's why you move your eyes around. So you, like if you're reading a book, you have to move your eyes around to focus on the thing. Because around here, it's all a bit blurry, isn't it? But around here, the thing you're looking at is, is super high res. So, when you're looking at a distant object, the, um, so think about the angle of gaze, right? Or the, uh, the angle that the light is passing to the retina. When you're looking at a distant object, you, your eyes are kind of parallel, right? So the, the light coming in from the two eyes is kind of parallel. You're looking at something at infinity. But as you well know, when you look at something close up, if you, the classic one is following your finger to your nose, you go cross-eyed. Why do you go cross-eyed? Well, that's convergence. And um, if you practice enough, you can do this <laughs> without uh, using a finger. Oh. And what's happening there is that the, 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 the eyes are moving in opposite directions. That's the important thing. So with convergence, the eyes both adduct, right? And with divergence, they both go the other, other way. You don't really do that. I, can, I don't think I can do that. I can do convergence, but I don't think I can do... And cross-eyed is convergence, but I don't think I can make my eyes point in opposite directions. I can. Anyway, so convergence, when you look at something close up, and then when you look at something in the distance, divergence brings the... The, 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 the eyes kind of parallel to each other. The angle that the light comes in through the pupil to the retina, those lines are parallel, right? Got it? So then, final question. Have you worked out why we have to do this? Yes. The reason we move the eyes with convergence is so that we can keep the macula and the fovea focused on the thing that's close to us. So if we're going to keep that binocular vision, if we're going to keep both eyes focused on the thing that's near to our eyes, we need to make the, uh, the pupils point in a little bit. We need to cause adduction. All right, anatomically then... What's this? This is a, um, a right eye. This is a right eye. So what muscles are we using to adduct both of these eyes? Yes, we're using medial rectus. Um, so with convergence, we use medial rectus to bring the angle in of the eye, to adduct the eye, which means that if one eye is stronger than the other, as in if the, the, the uh, medial rectus muscle is stronger on one side than the other, then you're gonna quite early on and quite close to the nose, you're gonna to start to get double vision because one eye will move fine and the other eye won't quite move appropriately. So you get a bit of diplopia, right? Um, so if that's convergence, so for divergence, how do we move the angle of vision laterally again? How do we abduct the, uh, the vision, the abduct the eye? That's lateral rectus, isn't it? So both of those muscles, well, so the medial rectus then is innervated by the ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve three, but of course, because you've seen all the eye videos and you know this stuff inside out, lateral rectus, which abducts the eye, is innervated by abducens, cranial nerve six. Ba -da. So hopefully that was a nice short addendum to the eye videos explaining um, how accommodation and convergence work together. All right, um, and hopefully I've edited that together in less than three cups of tea and it's a nice short video. Good. See you guys next week then.